Hello everyone, welcome to KubeCon 2020. Today we're going to discuss document understanding and processing with machine learning on Kubeflow. My name is Rui Vasconcelos, I'm a product manager for AI and machine learning at Canonical. And with me today I have Charles Edetiloye, co-founder and AI consultant at Maven Code, our partner to deliver end-to-end -end AI solutions. Charles is going to start by introducing the document understanding and processing use case. Then I'm going to touch on Kubeflow and operations around machine learning on Kubernetes. And finally, we will show a demo of all these pieces in action. Charles, the floor is yours. Thanks, Roy. Um, so thanks, and thanks for everyone for coming in for our talk today. Uh, today, we're going to talk about large-scale enterprise data understanding and processing with machine learning on Kubeflow. Well, before we get started, a little bit, a little bit about us. Uh, Maven Code is a artificial intelligence solutions company. Uh, we partner with Canonical to deploy and develop end-to-end -end AI solutions. Some of the things we do include uh, data pipeline implementations uh, for uh, processing data they use for your model training and inferencing, operationalization of ML model, um, basically getting your ML model from your development environment into production, and large-scale automated document processing which forms most of the part of what we're going to be talking about today. Every enterprise deals with document and they come in, in different forms and variety. And one of the things we aim to do uh, with document AI is to be able to help you as a business classify or sort your documents, adapt to different document variations coming in and be able to basically extract structure information from the document and also save the overall employee time. In other words, uh, enhance your productivity as an organization. A little bit more context around document understanding and processing with AI. Document understanding with AI is a machine learning solution that performs information extraction from paper-based and electronic document. So um, for you to be able to do that, uh, you need to do the following. Uh, basically, you want to be able to like understand the document type. Is it a PDF document or JPEG or PNG? And once you understand the document type, then you can now perform the not the, the appropriate document extraction on it. So um, it could be OCR if it's PDF or scanned image, or you could use APIs uh, around PDF, vectorized PDF documents or Word document or Excel document. Then once, you're on, uh, 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 once you've extracted the content, the next thing is like you want to be able to categorize the content according to category or document type. So uh, what we mean in this case could be like, if you're a big organization, it could be like you sorting out your invoices, separating it from resume, proposals, or receipts, and things like that. So for you to, for you to be able to do that, uh, we need to do, I mean, build a model that will be able to understand all the different uh, categories of document. And once you do that, you can now build a specialized model uh, for the named entity extraction. And once you've extracted the content in a structure format, you can now keep it in your data store, index it, and build a knowledge graph around it if you need to do so. So uh, document classes vary by using industry content. Uh, the overall goal of this process is to be able to um, extract the contents of your document and put it in a structure format that you can use uh, to do some analysis or analytics downstream. So uh, to just put a little bit more picture to what we're saying. So uh, this is a sample invoice uh, that we picked up. And using AI, we're able to like convert the info invoice into JSON text that basically we can put it, uh, we can store in the database and use for, for the analytics downstream. So basically the model is able to identify this as a type of invoice. We pick up the invoice number, the customer information, and the, the date, the invoice date, the due date, and the line items in the invoice. And we extract that information, we convert it to JSON payload that we push downstream and you can store it in your database, you can put it in a graph database, 
and, and things like that. So those are the kind of things uh, you can do once you've extracted the structured information out of the invoice. Just to put a little bit more big picture into it. Uh, so this is a high level overview of the kind of system we deal, deal with. Now we build out the machine learning workflow. So imagine you have all your document flowing in and you've been able to successfully dump it at the block storage. In this case, we're running on, on, on SEP, uh, running on-prem on canonical uh, Ubuntu infrastructure. And um, you have different kinds of document, PDF, Word doc, Excel, and you've been able to do text extraction through API or OCR. Uh, the next thing you want to do is to classify these documents, uh, put them in different buckets, categories, so that you can easily process and build models to extract things inside that category. So in this case, we have, um, let's say, proposal document bucket, uh, receipt bucket, and invoice bucket. So we build a model to basically classify and put these documents in different buckets. And once we've done that, we can now do the name identity extraction, which is a model that is mad enough to be able to extract all the information that we need from each of the different items in, in the different buckets that we've created. So um, let's deep dive a little bit more into the document classification workflow. So this, imagine this is a document. Um, the fourth thing we do is a beta accuse it, uh, acquire, I mean, connecting to the data source pulling up the data and pre-processing it. So what we do is we connect to, uh, in this case, the blob storage uh, that we're using. Uh, we pull in the data. Um, if we need to do OCR extraction, we'll do it. If we need to do some pre-processing, like um, cleaning up drop-in pages that don't really contain any information um, um, and, and things like that, a data set that we cannot really process because it's not well extracted. Uh, we'll drop all those things into like, um, in most cases in production, you drop it into like an exception bucket. And once we've processed and extracted uh, the, the content we need, uh, we'll do it like, uh, we try to extract the features in that con in that document. And that allows us to build a model um, that basically can understand the context and what kind of document it is. And we build that model, and for that, you can use different algorithms to do that. Linear regression algorithm surprisingly works so well uh, for classification. So we run our model training, and we generate a model. Uh, once the model is good enough, we can push it for model serving, and we'll deploy the model, and we can start inferencing with it. So any document you send to this model, it's going to be able to tell you what category the model belongs to, what kind of document it is, and things like that. And the output cannot be placed in the category bucket where you can uh, do any R extraction downstream. So let's see the any R um, name identity rec recognition that we do on the document to extract the text that are relevant. So for us to do that, um, same thing, we go inside the subcategory bucket where we've classified the document we do data annotations and pre-processing. So you know, before we we'll take some document that we tag and we use for training. Um, so uh, once we tag the document and annotate it properly, uh, we do some cleanups if needed. And uh, we do the model training. We we'll run it through multiple iteration uh, to, do, to derive a, a, a model. And once we have a model from this process, we can push it downstream for model seven. And um, from model seven, we can now deploy the model and start inferencing against it. So we can make an API call, uh, send in a document to the API endpoint, and it's going to be able to tell us what kind of document. I mean, it's going to extract the JSON payload from the document and tell us the type of document it belongs. So by this time, you can now chain together your classification model and your name identity extraction model to create a kind of AMP bandit model where once the document flows in, the first thing you do is to try to know what category or class the document belongs to. Is it like an invoice? Is it a receipt? Or is it some other document or claims document and things like that? And once you understand the category, you can now send it to the next stage, which basically allows you to apply the right NER model to be able to extract the content out of the document. So um, just to deep dive a little bit more, on the model serving component. We're using KF serving, Qflow serving. 
and basically this allows us to um, basically uh, create models uh, and promote models and manage all the different versions of models that we have. Because over time, as we get more document, we need to retrain and to make sure that our model is not drifting. So for that, uh, we use Scaffsopping a lot and it's been really helpful for us. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about it during the demo. So uh, imagine you have a document over time, you have different models. Um, so you can do like, um, you can select the proper model and that model basically gets, allows you to make a new inference. So let's say you have a new version you can basically select the new version of the model using for inference. Or let's say you still want to use an old version because it's an old document. So you can select the appropriate version to use for your inferencing. And we have the model management environment where you can load models, put more models, and get them up and ready uh, for, for, for saving. And once you send the document to the model, it basically helps with the inferencing, and you have your JSON payload that comes out of it. So uh, you may decide to want to build a knowledge graph or just pass you the results of the inferencing in a graph database. So uh, you can extend this and basically take whatever JSON payload you have and index it in Elasticsearch database or new, uh, new 4J graph database where you can now search or do some in internal intelligent knowledge drill down on the documents where you want to see the relationship and correlation between documents. A lot of all these use cases we see it a lot um, in legal documents where you're trying to correlate and connect uh, references to a particular actor within the old script and be able to like find the occurrence and the relationship between them. So we can do a lot of all these analytics once we've extracted the information. So uh, with that said, I'm gonna hand over to Rui and he's gonna talk a little bit more about Qflow setup in production environment. Uh, Rui, you wanna take it off? Thank you, Charles, for the great presentation on the document processing use case. I will now briefly cover how you can do analytics at scale using Kubernetes to orchestrate your machine learning workloads. The key concept here is MLOps, or machine learning operations, which derives from a need of well-defined data science processes on top of scalable infrastructure. This makes the development and deployment of AI models to production efficient, as opposed to having sets of siloed notebooks and scripts that are hard to share and collaborate on. The cloud native toolkit for machine learning operations is called Kubeflow and is the one we will dive into right now and use also in the demo. Kubeflow includes a multi-user central dashboard that data scientists and data engineers have access to and which efficiently aggregates machine learning frameworks and libraries such as TensorFlow, PyTorch, or Scikit-Learn with operators to run these jobs on Kubernetes. Kubeflow pipelines, which we will dive into right after, experiment tracking, hyperparameter tuning with a tool called Katib, and Jupyter Notebooks, the most used uh, IDE in data science. Kubeflow pipelines are a key differentiator of uh, Kubeflow. It's a built-in feature. And a pipeline is in essence a direct acyclic graph of steps of your machine learning workflow, each step being packaged as a container with inputs and outputs. This promises to make your AI more composable or made of interchangeable components, which makes it easy to share and reuse. When you run the pipeline, the blocks or the components of the pipeline will run asynchronously, taking these dependencies into consideration. Containers are run into pods that are orchestrated through the Kubernetes API. And because it's run on top of Kubernetes, it inherits the scalability capabilities of Kubernetes, as well as the ability to seamlessly run on different environments. Kubeflow is indeed a great open source tool with only one caveat. The more than 20 microservices inside the Kubeflow bundle all have to be integrated, configured, managed, and upgraded. So uh, day zero and day two operations can be quite challenging. And this is where Canonical's charm operators can help. If you did not attend the open operator day on the 17th, visit charmhub.io to learn more about what charm operators are and check the list of all the operators we have specifically for Kubeflow, for easy consumption and day zero and day two operations. Of Kubeflow, Canonical has created charm operators for each application or microservice inside the Kubeflow bundle and integrated them into what we call Charmed Kubeflow. You can also read more about Charmed Kubeflow on charmed-kubeflow.io. 
And with this, we can jump right on a demo of the document processing use case with Charm Kubeflow. Um, so basically, we talked about the NER, uh, the classification pipeline, and the KF7, which is more of for the deployment um, in the presentation earlier. So I'm just going to show you what a classification pipeline looks like. Uh, basically, we have a dock loader that connects to the data source and um, pulls in the data uh, that we need for the training. And we pre-process it. Um, we basically uh, split it into different categories um, based on the processing type we want to do. So this basically identifies the content type and we create different category for the pre-processing. Then we basically do like um, the text extraction, uh, read up the contents uh, based on the encoding type, if it's a JPEG or PDF and things like that. And we write it out into text and we do some further pre-processing. In some cases, we need to remove the stop words and, and things like that. So we do it during this stage. And we do the training uh, to basically train the model based on the information we've extracted from all the different categories for classification. Then we do a quick prediction and validation to make sure our model is okay. If it's okay and it make, meets our threshold, then we do the export and we can export the model. So that's our classification pipeline. Uh, the next one I wanna to touch is the NER, which is basically after classifying the model and getting our model in different buckets, we can have our connectors that connect to all the different buckets. Then we do the NER pre-processing, which is a clean ops that we need to do, uh, fit in the annotated data sets from all the different uh, locations, and basically uh, run the training operation that trains uh, the model to identify and build the different models for the different data sets we have coming from the different categories and the annotations we have about them. Then we run a quick prediction uh, just to make sure uh, the model is predicting the right output and we validate it and make sure everything is okay. Then we export our model um, to like another blob storage and things like that. And uh, once we've done the, uh, the model training and we have a model for NER and classification, but we have a KF7 deployer that allows us to just deploy the model and stage the model for inferencing. So, um, these are like uh, these are like our pipelines. So if everything runs to complete, the classification pipeline looks like this for each of the stages that we run. And um, this is for just for the seven. It's a simple model. Then the NER, which is a lot more interesting. After doing the name density extraction, our pipeline looks like this. So I'm just going to show you quickly what this looks like once we have it for inferencing. So for that, um, I, I just picked up the model that we generated and. Um, have it in a, in a container that we're about to deploy for inferencing. So I'm going to show you that real quick. So this is a sample document. Uh, it's just uh, for insurance claim. And we're trying to like um, basically extract some basic information like the patient name, the provider information, and things like that. Uh, we're trying to process this document uh, using uh, AI and ML inferencing to extract the key information that we need and we want to push it. Uh, downstream for another system to consume it. So uh, this is a document. Um, I'm going to show you the API endpoint. So we can wrap our model into into a container, a custom inferencing uh, container that gets served with our KF7. And um, uh, I'm going to just try it out on the PDF document and we can check out the results. So I'm going to go in, uh, pick up that sample demo file that we just looked at. And, uh, and we're gonna try to inference on that document. So uh, let's see. There you go. So uh, so this is a document that we just pulled up. Uh, we pulled up the organization name, the address, the provider information, uh, the phone number, the MPI, the patient information, and the procedure code and the total payment amount. So all this information are what we could infer from that document. And we can now have it in a structured JSON format that we can push downstream uh, for further uh, processing or for further analytics uh, downstream. But the beauty of this is like we've been able to basically extract the valuable information that we need from the document. And we have it in a structured format that we can consume downstream. Uh, thank you.